from insignificant, it is vital. Our role is vital. But back to the question of where is the divine? No two points can occupy the same space. As much as the singularity of the divine can look at what we are doing collectively, what you are helping me do, what you are encouraging me to do, what you are doing on your own and with others, as much as the divine loves that, wishes to participate in that as a, as a unique collective awareness, if the divine were to actually, as a singularity, intervene into the dream, the dream would collapse. No two points can occupy the same space. And that is the paradox of being divine. Absolutely love life. Why? We know that the divine loves life because it is the meaning of all. The meaning of all is awareness loves life. A-L-L. It's been there forever. Funny how we miss the things that are obvious in front of us. Awareness loves life. A-L-L. It's been there forever. Why don't we see it? Because we see the world as la. Life loves awareness. <laughs> we, we, we stop and we forget sometimes to, to put ourselves in the, in the mind of God, in the shoes of, of the divine, and see it from the perspective of the divine. So in reality, the only thing that can intervene on behalf of the divine, the only being, the only awareness that can intervene on behalf of the divine without collapsing existence because that's what it's, that is, is at stake is you. Because if the divine did it, the universe would collapse. Now that's not a throwaway line to say for kids, you know, why did, why did my father die in a car accident or why did my sister die from cancer or why did terrible things happen to us? Because I've never been comfortable with throwaway lines. And of course, it's taken me a few minutes to explain this. It's certainly not an easy thing to explain. The background of this, but no two points can intervene in the same position. No two points can occupy the same point in space. So the only awareness that can change the universe, the dream, from within is you. So that's where the divine is. The divine is, is with you. And that's what we need to work on and that's what we need to talk about tonight. And that's what we will be helping tonight, about helping you change the dream. Well, in respect of, I think, a lovely chat last week about prayer, I'm going to read out a prayer before we go into the second point, which is where's the enforcement we need more armour. Give us the tools. Where and when are they coming? And, and show us what's going on. Because for many, I know there's a frustration. You've been waiting. You've been waiting. It seems that there's been all this discussion, all these private chats that some of you may have been hearing, because all everything I say is, is public. I don't hide anything. But what, what's going on? And, and, and where's the delivery of these things? The money, the covenants, where is, where is it? That's point two. I'm going to get to point two. But before we get to point two, let me read out one of the prayers that you can pull off the, the site, one-heaven.org. And it's the prayer called Desiderata by Max Ehrman. I'm going to read it, and I know a number of you, you know it, but I'm going to read it out because to me it encapsulates just who and what we are and to remind ourselves so it's a little bit long, but I hope you don't mind. Go placidly amid the noise and the haste and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible, without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. Speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others even to the dull and to the ignorant. They too have their story. 
avoid loud and aggressive persons. They are vexatious to the spirit. If you compare yourself with others, you may become vain or bitter, for always there will be greater and lesser person than yourself. Enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. Keep interested in your own career, however humble. It is a real possession in the changing fortunes of time. Exercise caution in your business affairs, for the world is full of trickery. But let this not blind you to what virtue there is. Many persons strive for high ideals, and everywhere life is full of heroism. Be yourself. Especially, do not feign affection. Neither be cynical about love, for in the face of all aridity and disenchantment, it is as perennial as the grass. Take kindly the counsel of the years, gracefully surrendering the things of youth. Nurture strength of spirit to shield you in sudden misfortune. But do not distress yourself with dark imaginings. Many fears are born of fatigue and loneliness. Beyond a wholesome discipline, be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. Therefore, be at peace with God, whatever you conceive him to be and whatever your labours and aspirations. In the noisy confusion of life, keep peace with your soul. With all its sham, drudgery, and broken dreams, it is still a beautiful world. Be cheerful. Strive to be happy. What beautiful words. Beautiful, beautiful words. And no matter how sad you might be, no matter how much strife you are in, the trials of life, There is love and there is words, there is hope. If only you reach out and, and really understand how amazing you are. The divine creator needs you and calls on you to help. Because only you can make the change. Well, let's talk about number two. This is all great, but where's the enforcement against the pirates in the courts? And a very simple email that I received, and, and this is, I won't mention who it came from, but these are the words, and, and they really struck it at the issue that people are facing. It simply said, where are the writs, please? We need them. We are on the battlefield without armour, please help. And the public register. There are offences every day. Absolutely. Absolutely, and I'm reminded of that every day that I'm working on what I'm doing. And it frustrates me because I want the writs to be finished. I want the register to be turned on. I want the money system to be there. But you know what? It's not about the activity, it's about the foundation. It's about the foundation of the argument. Now, it may not appear to be, because it certainly appears that when you send out an ecclesiastical deed poll, or you send out a decree of nullity, or you send out an executor letter to these people, they ignore them, they laugh at them, they think it's a joke. They have no idea of their own laws. They have no idea of their history. They don't care. They don't care. But we are still dealing with a world built upon a kingdom of ideas. The Roman cult is a kingdom of ideas. The Vatican is a kingdom of ideas. Religion is a kingdom of ideas. It's the ideas that build the world we see not the other way around. And whilst tanks and guns and jails and prisons and bank accounts and all the fear that they can muster against us is very real, very real in this dimension. 
it is nonetheless a manifestation of the kingdom of ideas. So, what are we doing then in terms of enforcement? What are we doing in terms of the tools? Well, I said over many of these calls that the key to dealing with their injustice and their corruption is to stand in honour, to be competent with the law, to know who and what you are, and that there is no documents that can wield magic. Only you can do that. Well, of course, that's easy to say. <laughs> I've said it a few times. But it dawned on me when I went back to the reviewing of the canons, and I, and I really thank you all who have been reading the canons on one half in heaven at all, and, and, and coming back and saying you're finding that they are enormously helpful for you because that's what they're there to do. It occurred to me when I went back to them that there's still a number of fundamental gaps within the canons of positive law and indeed the canons of ecclesiastical law, which we'll talk about in a moment. And what I'm referring to is, is simply this. If, if one is to claim that the canons are inspired by the divine, would you really think that the divine simply sends down the line a series of edicts and says, there you go, you sort out the rest, good luck. Here's Ten Commandments, you work it out. I mean, of course not. The law is not simply a series of decrees. The law encompasses how to utilise that law, how to enforce that law, how to learn from that law, how to understand, how to survive. And of course, when I say to, to you all that the key is to stand in honour in their courts and not place your faith in pieces of paper, that's fine for me because... Well, I, I can speak and I can talk and I can express myself. But how many of us have been taught the skills of logic, which are used in court? Inference, deduction, induction. How many understand reductio absurdum and the, the fallacies that the courts use? How many of us have been taught dialectics? How many even understand what rhetoric is? So, tonight I want to let you know that there are two major sections that are being updated as we speak into the canons of positive law. I'm only sorry that I can't direct you to the website now to see them, but they are certainly progressing at such a pace that I'm confident to say, although I've said many promises before and those things are still in the works, but I am confident to say that these sections will be available in time for our next call. And the two sections I want to cover now, which go to the heart of armour, the heart of tools, the heart of strengthening our ability to stand up against corruption and wickedness, is a new section called Occurrence, and a new section called Argument. So if you go to the Canons of Positive Law, Section 5 will be Occurrence, and Section 6 will be Argument, and then Section 7 will be Law as it, as it sits at the moment. Well, what do I mean by Occurrence to start with before we get into the tools of Argument? One of the most disturbing things, I think, for, for anyone that encounters the law for the first time, because we're not taught this, is the apparent twisting of it where it appears that they're almost putting on a show, a drama. There are words like actor, plot, motive, the list of people involved called the dramatist personae, and it seems that they're kind of running a, a show, a drama, a theatre production, where you are invited as an actor, yet they won't give you the script, 
They won't tell you the length of the play. They won't tell you the right.